can I do the arithmetic here? <laughs> so uh, we're looking at the ratio of the change in the grid in volts versus the change in the current in the plate circuit in milliamps. So it's V over I, R equals E over I, V over I, V is 1. Might as well watch me boot this up on the paper here, why not? So, so we take 1, the change was 1 volt, and the change in the current here is 2.4 milliamps, 2.4 milliamps. So if that's out, this becomes a K. What happens if you divide 1,000 by 2.4? Oh my gosh, I don't know. <laughs> Where's my calculator? If you did 1,000, well, if you did 1,000 by 2, that'd be 500. So it's something less than 500, 400. So we're somewhere in the range of 400. That's as accurate as I'm going to rate this. GM is 400. GM measured in my... Uh, tube tester is 2000. So now we'll try this exact same thing, only now we're going to do it with a signal. I'm going to stop the video while I get this set up because I think this is going to be hairy <laughs> getting this going. Okay, well I just stopped things for a minute because actually it's not that hairy. Everything is kind of set up already. So signal generator is feeding a signal. I'm just reviewing this for my own sake into here through a capacitor onto the grid. Also, at the same time, the scope is watching exactly the same point. It's watching outside the capacitor. I've been, I've been fooled by this before. And this lead here is a voltmeter lead. So this might, this might not work, but we'll see what happens. Then the other channel on my scope is watching the B plus line on top of the tube. There's no, there's no resistor in the circuit. What, what am I possibly going to see from that? Well, the answer is, uh, I may not see anything, there's no plate resistor. So that is probably a stage I got to inter introduce off. Oh, I won! What I win? Did I win something? <laughs> okay, down to 8 before the meter quits. Down to 8, we'll do this at 8. Do the GM measurement at 8. Okay, so now we want to bring on the sine wave to the grid. The grid is showing on one of these two, I think it's this one here see all that okay let's bring it on switch on oh ooh, yeah good switch on this so we know what frequency we're at 500 Hertz so we're doing this at 500 Hertz the AC voltage on the grid what where did where, 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 this go what happened so my scope the it's coming back okay so the scope is set to AC. So these lines should always settle back to the zero points that I've set here. Okay, we'll, we'll bump up the signal on the grid now and watch, watch for it to appear here. Okay, who's quitting? This guy. Goodbye to you. You, you, you think you're so important to me that you can just fall off and yell at me at any moment? Absolutely no consideration from these meters. They're just so rude. Here we go. Okay, so, so let's just stop. Nothing, nothing happened. Nothing happening. So we should at least see the grid circuit. Now it could be I've just turned it down to such a level it's not appearing. But let's just double check everything here. It certainly is connected. You certainly should be able to see it. Let's try it again. Ooh. Ooh sorry, my arm was in the way there. Let's move this over here. is not happy here. Why would something not be happy? There should be a powerful, easily seen signal here. This is 0.1 volts. Everything checks out and adds up. Okay, let's try it again. Hmm. 
like the scope is kind of popping into another state. I don't, I don't like that at all. That's just not, it's not working for me. Why in heaven's name would we not be able to see this? Uh, the scope is essentially connected straight to the output of the signal generator. Huh. Every time I turn around. Did I say something about Mr. Murphy yesterday? So the incoming signal is coming on this line to here. The outgoing signal is heading out on the scope here. The grounds of the incoming and the outgoing scope are connected together there. How can this possibly not work? This is the plate voltage sensor line, if you like, this green wire. That's plate. This is the plate voltage meter, which is retired at the moment. Something silly is going on here. They have B plus on this too, but 250 volts. Don't forget that, Jim. Plate switch is closed on one plate. I'm connected to one grid. I'm connected to both grids. The grids are not separated by a switch like the plates are. I don't know. I can't figure this out. This is not making sense. Okay, we're going to just unplug the signal source here and the scope and just put them right together so all we're doing now on the scope is just looking at an output where where is it what has gone wrong something something funny has happened up here 500 hertz this should show a nice sine wave here Ooh, look at that. Ooh, 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 ooh. What's happening? Oh my gosh, I don't know, man. This is really starting to unnerve me at this point. Uh, wow, Did, have I destroyed my uh, signal generator? Is that what's happened here? Oh my gosh. Come on, man. Okay, so to find that out, I'm gonna just take the, right on this cord, I can take the output out of here. Watch out now, could there be, no, this is grid voltages on here, nothing too serious. Plus, I have protected the uh, signal generator from even the grid voltage with the capacitor. Don't, 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 don't. I'll start falling over now. Okay. Now, this is probably just going to reveal something idiotic I'm doing. That's probably what's going to happen here. something has happened. Uh, I don't think that matters. Wow, I'm uh, heartbroken. Um, we're definitely looking at this. Yeah, no question this is what we're looking at. Put on all the Attenuation, I can. What has happened? Now, sometimes there's a button over here that seems to uh, to mess things up. Maybe that's what's happened. Let me give it a more juice here.
Actually, this is coming and going also. Now wait, this was this was working, so there's a signal in there. Why did this just come floating back in from nowhere? So a DC offset you can actually use this to create a bias on this tube rather than do it the way I'm doing it. But this is off. There's no DC bias. I have the attenuation all the way out. This is a disaster. This is a complete, utter disaster. Oh, man. Jim, what have you done to your equipment? Okay, uh, wow, the name of the game has changed entirely to either I'm really become stupid here or uh, my, one of my machines is broken. Come on, can't be, can't be, can't be, can't be, can't be, can't be broken. Hey, none of these buttons are pushed. Push this, and there's nothing on the scope now, even when you crank it right up. What is going on? What a kind of a dumb. So, this is set, this is definitely sweeping on its own. Oh! This was pushed. Okay, well, I don't know what was going on there. Uh, maybe this button is intermittent, or I don't know. Or maybe, maybe I, you know what, I probably pop this, and then later I push this, and then I pop this back in, and it took me a while to find out I had to pop this back in. That's why I, I bumped this out by accident. Whew. Man, I'm telling you, I just, 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 I don't know about, like, you're watching at home. I'm panicking here over this. Okay, I don't have to panic now. Okay, everything's okay. Trying to be as careful as possible to not damage anything here, but, but that includes my ego. <laughs> my ego takes one heck of a beating in here, but you know what? That's good for you. That's good for you. You're going through life thinking you're, you, you know, I think life to some degree is a process of finding out more and more about what you don't know. I think that's really what it is. Okay, now we can get all the way back to where we were. I think. I'm guessing it's this guy again. Okay, this guy's gone to sleep. So we're getting ready to put a signal on the grid and measure the result in the plate. Got the scope connected so I can see voltages. But what's really of interest in the plate is the current. So reading the current in the plate is tricky. I was hoping that somehow this clamp on ammeter would do the trick. I think this is out, out the window. This guy could read the AC current in the plate, maybe. By setting it to AC, it's got a pretty sensitive thing down here, 20 milliamps. Problem is with DC flowing through it, maybe it can't it can't separate them out. I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out um, right now, in fact. So I'm pretty sure if I read DC current and I put on an AC signal and AC stuff starts happening with this tube, this thing is still gonna say 7.3 DC. It shouldn't change. And we can see if something's happening in this tube only if I include a resistor in the plate circuit. Plate circuit now is going through this switch. Resistor could be placed almost anywhere in, could be placed right here. Placed like, like I had it, like I had it, like I had it. <laughs> okay, let's we have to we have to have this resistor in here. So let's let's kill the plate. Turn off the power supply rather. Kill is not a good word. Okay, so we can easily do this. If I 
did this before. Let's first check and see what this... No, it's not. Because I don't think it's going to stay here. It's going to say, let's check and read the actual uh, resistance here. No. Quickly, man. Try to keep one thought running in one line for a while. If you can just... Oh, here comes my cat again. So let's think about where the scope is connected now. The scope is... <laughs> again? Oh my gosh, how many times are you going to come in today? What happened? Hey. I don't... Now you're going to ignore me. So what's going on, Peanut? Peanut, what's going on? See, because okay do the flop show them the flop come on last time he was going to do the flop and he didn't do it show them what you do all the time peanut no he's not gonna he's not gonna do the flop man yeah i know it's a beautiful day outside and you're stuck in here I know, and the snow, the snow is still out there. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the sides of my driveway still have three feet of snow piled on it. Wow. And it's uh, just around freezing today. It's not even fine yet. Okay, Peanut. <laughs> okay, with that that you're yawning too watching this video at this point. Yeah, just to review everything. Point six. Point four. How did I well I think I how did I get to point four? Point four because I was jacking up. How did I get to point four? Because I've turned it off. That's why it's a point four. That's why this is at zero. Okay, we're gonna. So I was just sorting out where the scope is connected. The scope is currently connected. Gotta think about this. The power is coming through the resistor to the tube. Yeah. So we're reading across the tube. Reading across the tube. Good. We should see something. That should do something. That should do something. I don't know what the resistance here is for sure, but it's supposedly something like 3,000 ohms. The way this is set. Let's give it some juice here. So, down on the B+. Plus. Eight volts, 0.6. Let's raise the B+, plus now. now the B plus meter here is reading what's actually on the plate. What's dropping across the resistor is missed. Oh my gosh, peanut, really? What? <laughs> I'm gonna have to stop again. But I gotta complete this. Let's complete this. Peanut, you're gonna have to wait. Can, can you wait? Okay, you do that. Every time I get distracted, boy, oh boy, raising, raising the voltage till we see a bit of current. I see a bit of current, then we'll stop. We've reached the limit of my supply. I can't get any more voltage than that. This resistor is way too big. Way too big. So we're going way down on this. Oh. Oh no, this is 3.3 million ohms here. That's crazy. Here, let's we'll do this. Turn this down before you do that, Jim. What a mistake you almost made. Okay, so now we've got 3.3K resistor, supposedly. 3,000 ohms in here. Now we'll raise the B plus. And we should get some current this time. Okay, here we go. So the Plate voltage would be approaching 250 right now, isn't it this guy? 
230. 5. Uh, so we want this to be... That's fine. Isn't that okay? That's okay. That's okay. 250. 250. We need 250 here. 250. Raise up a little more. Just because we want to follow the book. We're relying on that book. 250. Per everything's perfect. So now it's time to feed the signal into the grid. Make sure it's a 1 volt signal. Make sure it's a 1 volt signal on here. Why 1 volt? Because it's a nice round number. Okay, we're going to attempt now to put a 1 volt. Let's put this over here. 1 volt signal on the grid. And we could start seeing stuff on here too. But this is the grid. 1 volt. One little volt. Uh -oh. And nothing at all. What happened? Oh, I'm wrong again. What am I wrong about now? Okay, so, uh, well, that's interesting. So I'll, I've left this signal generator connected straight to the scope. We should have seen that on the scope. Why do we not? Got the right wire plugged in. Let's try that again. Oh, this could be why. I think I see why. Never mind my feet. I didn't have it plugged into the scope. Plugging her in. There we go. Man, let me tell you every mistake in the book I can make. Did that? Oh, just for a minute, I thought I saw my. <laughs> Okay, so something must be loose here somewhere. <laughs> There's no way my voice is causing this. Yeah, we got a ground lead coming off. There. That's better. Okay, now we set this to 1 volt. We'll go, we'll, go, we'll do this all in peak to peak. So 1 volt peak to peak would be way down here. Let me increase the uh, scan rate, no, decrease the scan rate so we get a better look at the height. Center this just a wee bit better. Turn it down just a touch. So, so based on what I'm looking at on my oscilloscope, that's one volt peak to peak on the grid. Now we're going to be looking at the voltage on the two, which is the, uh, see, uh, I don't know what to call it, it's the opposite of the voltage on the resistor. The resistor, we can find out what the resistance is and then find out the current that way. Well, I'm going to try measuring it right here. Wait a minute. AC current. So, okay, just thinking things through here. <laughs> sort of. So let me make this more sensitive up here. So we see what's what's on the plate. It's nonsense compared to what's on the grid. How come? Um, we certainly have plate current flowing. So this is the point I was at last time around when I did this test, where I really wanted to move a scope lead. This scope lead. Let's speed this up. Look a little crazy. This scope lead for here right across that resistor but in doing that I'm going to move a ground a power ground this is grounded this is not isolated I'm going to have two grounds in two different places on the circuit which is why I can't do that no reason why I can't read the voltage across that resistor though there's no reason I even have spare voltmeters don't I didn't I what do I do with it So here it is. So yeah, another voltmeter, or I can do it. I can just do it with this one. I can just do it with this one. Just, just think, think for a minute now. Uh, cathode. I need, I need to. I can't use. The, I don't want to use a plug in the wall meter for this. I want to use a totally isolated meter for safety reasons, basically. So we'll use this guy. I got some nice short leads here I think will work great on here. 
I'm going to read across this resistor. So reading across the resistor would be this is the negative lead. Let me put it on the black wire. And then this would just have to go on the other side. The other side is right here. Well, this is easy. This is actually working out pretty good. Put this guy in here. Put him, put him somewhere. Put him, put him. Oh, watch out there. Let's fix this a little bit. Put this yeah, right here. Don't get a shock, man. This is the voltage drop. Is this really on voltage here? <laughs> voltage drop. We want to read the uh, AC voltage drop. AC voltage drop, right there. RMS AC volts, right there. We got it. By Jove, we got it. Let's hook it up here. That made the meter laugh. It's laughing. What the heck is it doing? I don't know what it's doing. DC volts. 37.7 does that make sense that would be 37 volts on the resistor 250 on the tube add them together that's almost 300 and if we look up way up at the supply meter it's just over 300 on here it's a very inaccurate meter so that adds up that makes sense so what we've captured is voltage on the tube voltage on the resistor now, knowing the voltage on the resistor, this is the DC. I want to read the AC voltage. And it looks like it can't do it. AC. Overload. So these are all current settings up here. meter's just not going to do it. It's just going to do this crazy thing it's doing. I don't know what it's doing. <laughs> the nagging meter. Ah, oh, I'm trapped. I'm trapped in a world of world of what? Why is I can't read the current with this meter? Okay, let's try this. Now it's a current meter and flipping the control on it at danger, danger. I think if I flip it to 20, this goes to <laughs> yeah, this goes to sleep. This goes to zero. But I don't know if I interrupt the plate current. If I were to interrupt the plate current um, itself then what would we see happen here? We would see we would see this thing probably behave differently. I'll put this back on DC. Okay, that's a voltage drop on the resistor. I flipped this to 20. Just learning all kinds of weird stuff. So it's still carrying current. Flip this to 20 AC. Oh. Still carrying the same current. That's the voltage drop due to current through the resistor. Now, the question is, can we read an AC current in the face of a DC current. Okay, so 200 milli nothing. That could be a tiny, tiny. Well, according according to the scope, there's nothing happening here yet. Okay, so I think it's hopeful. I can read the current here. Hopeful. Not much more than that. This is the meter I want to use to read the voltage. Flip them right around. To turn this into the current meter that this one is. Oh, I'm so uncomfortable with all that. 
Is it, I'm dwelling on something here that's not important, maybe. Maybe there's another way around this. So what I'm trying to do is determine the plate current, the AC plate current, the signal plate current. I have a uh, unknown resistor in the plate circuit. There's a voltage there that can be read and measured. So later I can check the resistance and calculate it out if I want. Another approach is to stick another resistor in there, a known amount, an exact amount, and read across it again with an isolated meter. You know, I, I, I could use I can use this meter really because we know this is really really stable. This voltage here, so we'll use we'll use this meter. Let's try this one, reading. Uh, AC volts, the only uh, scale here is 200 and 500. That's no good. That's not going to help me at all. It's got to go down to 2 volts AC. Oh. <laughs> Such decisions to make here. Got to do something. Yet another voltmeter. This one won't read voltage or current. I don't think I have another voltmeter in the house. I have too many voltmeters as it is in this deal. There's too many here already. Well, let's see. We take the accurate plate voltage here and make, kind of make a note of it on this meter. So the 235 on here is actually 250. 235 is 250. We'll take this off. Wrong one. Take this off here. Okay, so now I have another voltmeter. voltmeter whose behavior I am not sure of. This has, hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, this has an AC milliamp scale on it. AC milliamp? It's DC. AC milliamps. Milliamps. Okay, let's try this one. Okay, pull this out. Open up the plate circuit. Cut off the supply voltage. Milliamps AC. Well, why milliamps DC right now? Milliamps DC, milliamps AC. It just goes back and forth. DC and AC. Excellent. DC milliamps. What was it? Was it seven? So this should read something like 7. Oh, you know, when I turn the uh, plate voltage just right down, I'm going to turn it back up because I know where up should be. Watching the wrong meter, we see a current. And we're going up around. So 4 milliamps. Perfect. We got one here. 5, 6. I'm coming up on 250. So 235 is 250. There we are. 7.2. Very same kind of reading we're getting here. Come out, meter. Come out with me. Come out with me here. Just lay down on the jaw. Okay, so so this these these two kind of go together. Voltage and the current. Ooh, don't drop it. Let's put can I put it here? I don't know where I can put it. Oh, can we read an AC? Now, what's showing on the scope is not very encouraging. We'll ignore, ignore the upper part on the scope. Just on the idea that I've done something stupid over here. We will look for an AC current flowing in the plate circuit. So we know there's seven milliamps DC. We're looking at one or two milliamps AC, which is really kind of really difficult to believe. AC. This is AC overload. Okay, it's ranging. 
So I think the problem is it, it, the auto ranging is thrown off by the fact that there's a DC current flowing through here at the same time. So unfortunately we can't do the AC current again. But fortunately, across the so that's the voltage drop across the resistor oh my gosh <laughs> now I realize why these tube testers come with only one meter on them there are tube testers that come with more meters so you can read things like this and do all this stuff man if you're in somebody's house and you're trying to make money it's pop the tube and take the test get the tube out get out of the house with the money it's not read 1500 meters uh, okay, talking about reading 1500 meters. Now, 608, 250, so we're in the mode. Signal on the grid, there it is, we're all set. Why am I not seeing something on the... Why am I not seeing this on the plate? looking at the wrong plate. Let me flip the switch here. No. Didn't exactly do it. So for sure I'm looking at the plate. Have to be. Have to be. Because this is the plate voltage here. The scope connection. I did get this to work once. So it's grounded. Whoa, that's almost shorted there. Oh! Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so I'm still sending the signal straight straight to the scope here. I'm not I'm not I'm not hooked into the circuit. Okay, now I know. We'll hook into the grid. Grid is here. Feeding a signal into the grid. Here. And now feeding a signal into the grid. So, um, that's the output on the upper part of the scope there. We, 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 we have an output, and this is the input if I just do this. By gosh, we've made it. Okay. I think very hard now. So, this is showing the voltage across the tube. This is not really what we want. We want the current going through the tube. We need to derive the current through the tube or measure it. I have a couple ways of doing that. One is uh, attempting to read the voltage drop across the unknown resistor. Another way is to stick more resistance, known resistance, and measure across that. I have a voltmeter available. So, um, now we're talking about a very, very small signal trying to operate a meter so we won't we will we, we can why am I not looking at the scope across the resistor but the scope across the resistor and, uh, and be excited about that let's see so no the reason I can't go across the resistor is because of the grounding problem my concerns whether real or not Uh, which is why, why, oh my gosh, why I was going to use an isolated meter. Use an isolated meter that can read very, very low voltages, AC voltages. So on this meter, it claims to read down to here. So 
be 2.1 mmo. A kind of voltage, if we put a thousand in there and we put a milliamp through a thousand, we get a uh, thousand ohms, we get one volt. Well, that's easy to see here. So if I put a thousand ohm resistor in. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to find out what this resistance is and think about either using this known. Okay, so that's an idea. Okay, power off. It's still hanging in there. It's slowly bleeding down or something. Yeah. Uh, read this resistance. And I happen to have a meter handy for doing that. Good old meter I am so familiar with. I think I am. We think this is somewhere around there. Okay. Got some flat surface here. Now, the resistance in here can be found. between the red and black wires. I break the black wire. No, not that one. Break the red one. Break the red one, there'd be no current flowing whatsoever. There shouldn't be any, but that just makes absolutely sure. There's no chance of current flowing through the resistor. We'll now read the resistance. Read it and weep. 5,000 ohms is what this says. So, in the book, it, it says uh, six, 7,000 should be the plate resistor. Any reason for me to pay attention to that? You know, this is a really good deal. 5,000 is an easy number to calculate around. Let's leave it just like that. 5,000. Okay. So now we know the resistor. You can write it down because because 5k ohm plate resistor. Hook it back up properly. The voltage across that resistor appears on this meter. We know the, we know the voltage, we know the resistance, we know the current. That's the AC voltage. Oh, right. That's right, we couldn't read the AC there. We're going to try it with this meter. That's right, what am I doing? There are too many things going on here. Okay, so this is isolated. I can hook it up any way I like, so I like it this way. There. Don't be confused now, there's three leads coming out of my resistor. There's two black leads. So if you're looking at this and going, wait, 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 wait a minute, there's no way for the current. There's another black lead carrying the current. So now we have this meter hooked up, Ooh. hooked up to read AC. We don't know what's going to happen. Let's see. Right now there is no AC. It's probably a little, just a little noise around here and there. Because this is this is millivolts, you know, nine millivolts. That's very low. This says nine. This one's doing the very same reading. It says forty-one. Is it doing the very same reading? Absolutely the same reading. So that's telling you something right there about this mixture of AC and DC and everything. And what is it telling you? Jeez, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to put the current back on. I'm going to hit the switch. Everything should just come to life. Okay, 250, 600, uh, minus 8. Okay, so we have a reading here, and it's kind of steady. Okay, so if I drop the input, then this should go away. If I drop the AC input, if I do this, oh my gosh, this is working. I can't believe it. 
So there is a DC current flowing through this meter and it's ignoring it. That's just exactly what I needed. Fantastic. So now we have a current. Wow. Really? That's point, uh, point 0.4 point four volts. So let me calculate this out here. Point 0.4 volts. Eh? I'm all excited now. So we have point 0.4 volts across 5,000 ohms. I gotta get a calculator. It's a vintage calculator which has its own problems. <laughs> Charge it up just for a second there. Okay, so now the calculation is 0.4 divided by 5,000. That's a very small number. That's not right. That's not right. Come on. Point. I'll have to do this by hand again. 0.4 volts. I equals E over R divided by 5,000. Divided by. Maybe I pushed the wrong button here. And the answer is a really small number. Of course. 0.00008. That, what is that? That is the, that's the AC voltage. That's the AC current through the 5K resistor. So, that's 80 nanoamps. <laughs> nanoamps. 80 nanoamps of AC. Okay, well let's use that. <laughs> we have because uh, now we do the GM calculation. It's simply the change in the grid voltage, which is one, one volt. It must be getting close. One volt divided by the change in the well, actually, it's a level of signal going in on the grid and the level of current signal coming out. The two. I'm really uncomfortable with this. You should really be trying to read the current with no resistor in there or put in a, a unimportant resistor, like a 100 ohm one, I think. But let's continue with this, though. Come on, keep, keep going. So. So it's 1 over 0 0.00008. Change in the voltage over the change in the current. There's something wrong here with my calculation. This is half a volt. Half a volt on 5,000 ohms. Okay, let's do the calculation here. 1 divided by 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, So I have one calculation that shows the GM is 400. I have another calculation just done now shows the GM at 12,000. I have a measurement in a commercial tube tester of 2,000. So 
I'm pretty sure this 12,000 thing is way off. Of the line. i got to come up with a better way of doing this, that's for sure. I think. Just a quick review of the stupid things I've done. Feeding in a 1 volt signal. 1 volt signal on the grid. Well, you know, I think it's a 1 volt signal on the grid. It may not because it's going through this capacitor. I'm just anxious about connecting this lead up right to the grid. So that could be a problem there. It could be a problem with this capacitor uh, arrangement. It may not be a volt on the grid. Can't I measure it? Can't I, can't I just measure it? Can I not just measure it with this? I just flip this over to AC volts and bingo. No, because it's so tiny. It's teeny tiny. It's it's one volt. It's 500 uh, kilohertz. The meter may not work at 500 kilohertz. That's another thing. I'm running this test with a frequency. Different frequency might give different results. I also have another plate here. I just flip the switch and see what's happening on the other plate completely. Somebody's leaving us, this guy. And i got to be careful now. I start flipping this on and off, and I'm going to end up doing something disastrous. This is reading volts right now. Nothing disastrous will happen. There we go. Disaster would be flipping that all the way to amps. That would be a disaster. I had a direct reading of the current flow through the uh, through the tube. It was seven. I now know the actual resistance here. It's five k. I know the voltage drop across the five k. Does this add up to seven? Or divide it to seven? This is just a way of double checking everything here. So uh, thirty-five volts now across five k. Um, so 35 volts, 35 across 5k. Oh, this is pretty easy. 7. 7 milliamps. Exactly. Good. So this works out. So the voltage it's reading here matches with the resistance to give the same current as the direct current reading was getting. That's a little reassuring. That means the 5,000 is true that I measured. 5,000. So am I doing a silly calculation error here somewhere? So we think we have 0.4 volts. Um, Across the plate resistor. So let me vary the uh, I'll vary the signal input level and see if this meter doesn't doesn't change. So we we'll give it more signal. We should see more current here. Oh yeah, for sure. This is actually working. I can't believe it. Really, totally stunning. Another thing I could have wrong. This one volt may not be one volt. You know what else I'm doing? I just realized another mistake I'm making. I'm doing peak to peak here and doing RMS on other things. Lots of mistakes being made. I think that's enough mistakes for today, though. Uh, it's lunchtime. Okay, so I'm going to call it quits here at this point. Um, as crazy as this is, I really feel like I'm homing in on something. It's helping me learn a lot about the realities of doing this kind of stuff. It's really helping me appreciate the power of these machines, <laughs> which are taking what is a horrendous task of trying to measure this stuff, you know, on a, on a bench and turning it into a really simple matter on these machines. So, you know, these machines are fantastic. As you can see, trying to do this manually is one challenge after another. But I think we're really close. Close, but no cigar. I got lots more to think about for the rest of today. So thanks so much for watching. And, uh, I'll see you on the next video. I'll carry on with my crazy experiments here all the rest of the day.
I have lots of crazy experiments I'm doing. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.